What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to uh, an incredible episode of Lockdown Badgers. I am so stoked for the guests that we have today. Uh, let's just get started. Let's not waste any time on Wisconsin and let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, as always, Ryan Herrings. Uh, so, so grateful for anybody giving any time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And we're just going to get right into it. We have two incredible guests. We have Dr. Roddy Ferguson and uh, Rufus Ferguson II. The, if the name sounds familiar, uh, everybody knows Rufus Ferguson, the road runner, one of the baddest Wisconsin running backs to honestly ever step field on, on campus. The first regular season thousand yard rusher. Um, I actually just want to start there. Um, doc, and either one of you, we'll start with uh, Dr. Roddy Ferguson, who is also, if you look at his resume, you're talking about somebody to live up to. Uh, I'm going to get into that in a second. But I wanted to start here uh, with your dad and just, you know, looking back at his film, and I was obviously too young, unfortunately, to see it live. He feels like a running back that was before his time. Like some of the 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, what happens is, uh, you know, running backs go through eras. And I ended up coming out of high school when they were in the era of the Eddie George, Christian Okoye running back. They had to be 6'2", 6'3". Uh, my dad was was before his time. He was before the, the Barry Sanders era. Uh, a good friend of mine that I used to train with, um, Sean Springs, who played for Ohio State. Ohio State, uh, he, he watched my um, my dad on film and he said, man, your dad was the, was the first coming to Barry Sanders. But they weren't looking for that Barry Sanders type of scat back back then. Um, in the late in the late sixties, early seventies, it was the it went from Gale Sayers to OJ Simpson, and it was the slashing type of style uh, running back that they were looking for at the time. And it goes through eras, and he was just a little bit before his time. But I mean, he did really well in his time. And I like to tell people who are listening: a lot of people look at my dad's yardage, uh, and they compare it to some of the other running backs, not understanding that in that time they had freshman football they had to play. Mm -hmm. So my dad's freshman yard is not is not counted because he had to play freshman football. So you're only seeing his yards from his sophomore, his junior, and his senior year. Uh, and your dad also played on teams that, quite frankly, weren't as good. He was the focal point uh, those last two years. You know, those are four win Wisconsin teams. He wasn't yes. with. And and he he sold out Camp Randall Stadium. Camp Randall Stadium was sold out when my dad was playing. One hundred percent. The attendance was down before he got there, and it skyrocketed when he was there. No, absolutely incredible. I put a question up on some people who were able to see him play, who were lucky enough to see him play. Uh, this is from John S. He said, Rufus was the whole show until the fifth quarter, of course. But my first memories of Badger football were Rufus Ferguson. Uh, this one's from Les Ismore. He basically saved us as Badger fans. Many of us were still with the 62 Rose Bowl, and we stayed loyal because of the excitement that he brought. Um, so just an incredible legacy. And Rufus, I want to go to you. Uh, obviously, we're too young to see him play, so you certainly were. But when you go back and you watch on YouTube and you see some of those clips and you see the type of athlete he was, what is that like as a grandson watching that? Looking at it, I seem like almost like since I have the same name as him, like I can, it almost like I see like foreshadowing into like the future because I have the same name. So when I was born, like I was already like for that path, for like for football, like now looking back on it, I can see like, I, I was like, brought and like curated to to follow to follow my grandpa's name now looking back on it looking back on like my uh, my childhood and what was that like um you obviously that your grandpa was an incredible football player your dad is we talked about he an olympian um i saw on wikipedia 17 time judo national champion is that correct i've well, seen different numbers there well, I was a four-time national judo champion. It, there's a couple. I, I I won a lot of championships, and people call them national championships. But the U.S. national championship, I won four times. I mean, the Gophers do that too. They've won a lot of championships. But listen, that's yeah. incredible. What is it like as uh, Rufus growing up with a dad like that, a grandpa like that? Does it help you as an athlete um, to to have that in your household, or is it a little tough at times? Does it feel like so there's some pressure? Hey, <laughs> Doctor Roddy's already going off screen. So. From doing like martial arts when I was younger, like I could like now looking back on like the videos, like how my what my dad used to tell me, he used to tell me when I used to be at like the martial arts tournaments, like the coaches would like try to like to keen their players like to like to beat me 
because my dad used to tell me like since they couldn't beat him in like the uh in the past they try to go they try to do that through me like his kid and like looking looking at like the matches like looking at videos of like my matches back then i can see that like there used to be crowds of like people like just watching the single match that would happen like sometimes when i would like go to jujitsu tournaments like they would stop all the other matches and then have me and like the other com- other opponent fighting and then everyone is just watching almost like um uh Ooh, what was super it? fight, a super fight, yes, yeah. It's a, like it, a it, it, he had to learn how to deal with the pressure, and I, I put on, I put a lot of pressure on him inside the house. Um, I don't have a soft parenting style. My dad didn't have a soft parenting style. Uh, we have a, a Caribbean upbringing. My family, all my family, from the Bahamas. And my dad's first generation American. I'm second, and of course, my son and my daughter are, are third. But we have a very Caribbean and down south type of you know, conservative rearing process, my man. I mean, that, that's the best way I can say it on the, on the podcast. <laughs> but we, you know, we, we don't, you know, we are about excellence and, and what's the other word, Rufus? Discipline. Discipline. Excellence and discipline. I mean, you're going to hear that out of my mouth all the time inside my house and the dojo, they're going to hear it. I'm, I'm a guy that is, I, I'm, I'm all about excellent and discipline and doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done. And there's, there was a lot of pressure on Rufus when he was younger. Um, and there should be. Uh, I don't raise my children without expectations. I do have expect- expectations. I expect them to be excellent at what they do. I expect them to to pursue everything with 100% effort. And whether they win or lose, I, I don't care. But the effort better be there, 100%. Well, and you had a really interesting, I was listening to um, a podcast, something you were talking about, because you're also a motivational speaker. You were really talking about that that frame of mind where I'm, I don't want excuses. If I say something, I want that thing done, period. And I want it done. I, I want yeah. it done. And that's how I was raised. My, my, my mother and my father were really, really um, tough on me. I thought they were strict. Um, now that I'm older, I'm super appreciative of the, the upbringing and the process. Uh, it wasn't until last year that Rufus told me, he said, he pulled me to the side. He said, dad, I said, I said yes. He said, thank you. But I mean, it, it took years and I'm not at 48 years old. I'm not going to swap out my 48 year old mind to follow a 17 year old mind. I mean, I love my son. I think he's intelligent. He makes great grades. He's a good kid. But, you know, the Bible says train up a child in the way they should go, not the way that they want to go. And that means you need to have a, a quality prayer life, stay, keep yourself connected, you know, spiritually so that you know exactly what way does does God have me guiding this particular child? What way should this particular child go? And then don't allow that child to deviate, even if that child wants to deviate, because a child is a child. Mm-hmm. No, and uh, speaking of, of the child of Rufus, you know, going to Madison on a visit, you know, obviously a, a six foot, 210 pound linebacker out of Florida, 2024 class came up to Madison, Wisconsin. Um, two part question here, Rufus, what was that like going into the stadium that your grandpa played in? Uh, was it kind of just an amazing experience and what was the energy like there with the coaching staff? The, so first being in there and seeing like my grandpa on like gate nine and then like the halls of like, uh, like camp Randall, it was like surreal. Cause like, like once again, it's just basically me looking at myself. Like when, when I, when I read the name, it's my name. And then like the accomplishments my grandpa has done almost like speaking it into like the, almost speaking it into the future. And then the coaching staff, I like, I love the coaching staff. They were like, they, they were like really like attentive, new, new, like all like my history, like, I know I, I searched them up before I went there. I could see like it was like a like the new coaching staff from Cincinnati, and like Coach Mike Trussell already knew my uh already knew about my grandpa and stuff like that. So it felt like really, really down down to home. Yes. That's awesome. And then okay, if you could just do a, a brief scouting report of your game, what if you could describe your game? Uh, how do you play on the field? Obviously, a linebacker. I've seen you play some running back as well, but primarily linebacker. Mm-hmm. I would say downhill. Uh, I would say my I would say my reads downhill and I fly to the ball. So ball hawk. 
And listen, there's the main attribute, yes, my heart. Is, is there anything in your game that you're really trying to work on now? Like from this point to the next 12 months, here's where I really want to get better. Yes, I always my uh my 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 pass drops, always my covering zone, zone, it's an area, it's an area I have to cover. But when it comes down to like man to man slot, even though I'm an inside linebacker and I take him out the backfield at camps, they do have me cover uh cover the slots. I like a DB, so I need to I need to work on some some press press and bail and stuff like that as a linebacker. I need to work on that. And I want to shift back over to uh, Dr. Roddy. How difficult is it? Because obviously you are also an athletic trainer. You you deal with athletes all the time. How difficult is it to balance the the fatherhood between the, the maybe the coaching aspect or the athletic training aspect with your son? Uh, in the beginning, it it was tough. Uh, now I have I have I have other coaches and mentors that I deal with. I don't coach my son uh, anymore. I stopped coaching him when he got in the eleven. 11- Seventh grade, and the reason being is the the next level of the coaching process. I don't want to do. It's it's too rigorous. It's too tough. It's, it's too it's too violent. Uh, he has a he has a gunny sergeant, uh, a former marine. Well, not a former marine. Once a marine, always a marine. He'll tell me uh, who's his strength coach now. Um, coach Jeff and Coach Jeff does all the strength coaching. And coach Jeff can be the mean guy. And I could just sit back and be dad. And I enjoy being dad. Um, I don't overcoach Rufus on the on the football field. Um, I sit in the stands and and I and I cheer him on. That's it. Even, even his last judo tournament that he had last year, I pulled myself out of the coaching chair and I had somebody else coach. That's awesome. That's great to hear. All right, we're gonna take a very quick break for our friends of the show. We're gonna come back. We're gonna put some film up. We're gonna walk through uh, Rufus's game, have him talk about his game, see some of his plays, uh, and play some uh, rapid fire questions as well. That's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a very quick break for our friends of the show over at Built Bar. Um, it's Built Bar is the best protein bar on the planet, bar none. And if you want to look a little bit more like maybe Rufus Ferguson, maybe Dr. Roddy Ferguson, maybe Bill Bar can help you get there a little bit if you put in the work. Something that you can eat on the way to the gym, something you can throw in your backpack. Great flavors. Again, I've talked about churro. That's my go-to. 100% real chocolate and 17, 20 grams of protein, not a lot of sugar. Something that my kids like, I like. It's, again, just an amazing protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Um, It's unbelievable. You're going to thank me later. Head to Walmart, get your four-bar box at Walmart or your 13-bar variety box at Sam's Club. Built Bar, you will thank me later. And once again, I want to say thank you so, so much to everybody tuning in. Um, so grateful for the great guests we're able to get, uh, Dr. Roddy Ferguson and Rufus Ferguson coming back on. Uh, gentlemen, I, I do want to say once again, thank you so much for your time and give you an opportunity if there's anything uh, from a social media standpoint that you know people can follow along with the journey and kind of uh, see what you guys are up to. You go first, Rufus. Yes, yeah, so my Twitter handle, Ferguson underscore underscore. Rufus is my Twitter handle. Uh, D1 underscore underscore Rufus is my is my IG handle. And yeah, so that's all I guess all I got. Well, for me, I um I always want people to, to follow me on the journey of my of my career and the things that I've learned uh, in my life in judo. I have a book called Judo is Life. They can be found at www.judoislife.net. I also have a book called Coffee with Radi, which is available on Audible. I have a couple other books on Audible, too, if you'd like to search my name. Um, and if you'd like to find me on uh, on any of the social media platforms, I tell people, just Google me. Just Google the name R-H-A-D-I. You'll find everything that you need to know. And I also have a podcast called Coffee with Radi, a personal, personal productivity podcast. Which... I, I need to check out more of your stuff. I have listened to the podcast, kind of getting ready for this, and I absolutely love it. So Thank I think it's so. great. And we're going to link both of your social media when we release the show so everyone can easily find um, everything that both of you have going on. I'm really excited to kind of dive more into the podcast as well. All right, let's 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 continue with um, your game, Rufus. One thing we do with every recruit, every commit, everybody, um, really all the football players we get on the show, is we have you do a little Madden rating, um, you know, NCAA rating. You're going to be – you know, in the college level, NCAA is making a new NCAA game, EA Sports, um, on a scale of zero to 100. Okay, you ready for this? Mm. Tackling. Tackling, 80. Speed. 75. Awareness. 
85. Agility. 90. Uh, I think you're actually a little low on your tackling grade. We're going to throw some film up here, but I like the humility. Um, and then one more thing we kind of ask everybody is, how would you consider yourself as a leader how, in the locker room, you know, relating to teammates? Is that something that you're still working on or is that something that you're, you're pretty strong at? I'm pretty strong at since since I have the aspect of like leading through example, like my team is able to like follow behind my word when I'm when I'm talking to them and also like giving them directions on the field. Ah, sounds great. All right, we're going to bring up uh, your film right here, if you don't mind, and just feel free. Let's talk through it. Let's watch some clips. Uh, I think some of these are actually really impressive from the defensive side. Um, we'll bring this up here. And you should be able to see it. Let me know if you can't see it. Yes. Okay. And uh, this is jumping around on the defensive side. There's some offensive clips here, but we're going to run through a play and then just pause it and let you kind of talk through it. Yes, sir. Yes, I remember this. So, yeah, feel free to, like, this is one of the things that um, I thought was most impressive watching you on film because I think people consider you maybe an undersized linebacker, but you bring a lot of speed and, um, you know, aggression to the hit point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So on this play right here, like throughout the season, my uh, my coach, my coaching staff was moving me from the outside to the inside linebacker, depending on, like, the team if they were if there was like more of like an outside run team they would like make me have contain and what 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 we figured out was that when i was on locked on on one side they would start running the ball up the middle and away so throughout throughout like the film you can see later later when we later when when the video is going you can see me stay staying at the middle so I could go from left to right and have the whole box and not just constricted to one side. But with this play, I remember that I was coming off the ball and I was like, I had like a free release. So I was like, okay, let me just go down and like rush the quarterback. And so the ball ended up coming out and it was like a fumble. And number 33, Aaron Raymond, he picked up the ball and was about to go all the way to the house. He was like, he was untouched when he re when he recovered the ball. The ball hit the ground, bounced right into his hands, and the and the ref the referees called. It was um he he they, they said that he tried to throw the ball, so it was incomplete. Oh. And it was it was it was it was like one of the worst calls that like our coaching staff think thought we had. But that's a terrible call. I know, I know. Wow. They, it was posted on like Big County Preps. Like, what 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 would you what would you think? And we we still had to uh, play and like adjust off this play, even though it didn't really go our way. Hey, let me ask you: How frustrating or difficult it is is it as an athlete uh, when the team just starts running away from you? When you how hard is it to stay locked in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with our team, we always have a mindset of like everybody running to the ball. So I know if I'm running to the running back, there's a there's a possibility that he's gonna cut back, and I'm coming in on the tackle so my mindset on all the plays to run after the ball even though if he might be far away he might cut back into my into my pursuit angle so like the possibility of like a tackle is there but like it might not be as high because he's running away but like the possibility is there i love it that's a great answer right, let's get to the next clip here again we'll play it and then we'll we'll pause and kind of talk through it jet sweep So, so this play right here was against Jefferson. So, first, first I saw that the line since since I'm at I'm at middle, only the only back in there. So, first I waited until I could actually know where he was gonna go. First I saw that he had he had the running back as his like lead blocker, and I saw that he was kind of behind the running back, and I saw that he was looking towards this big gap. So I decided to go. Through this gap because it is it is my responsibility. If he bounces outside, that is that is someone else's. I have the cutback lane, so I made sure I I had that that gap. I saw that he came through the gap. We I didn't I didn't get low, but I made I made sure that that he went backwards at at the point of contact. 
One, one thing I wanted to ask you about, and uh, either one of you, because uh, Dr. Roddy Ferguson, you obviously played football as well, went to Howard and played football. Um, you know, there there is a perception that you have to be six, maybe 6'2", 220 to play linebacker. Watching your clips, it feels like you have an ability to get skinny in traffic and really get around blockers. Like you have a, a unique ability inside the box. Do you feel I, that on the field? Yeah, and I, I, have a, I have a really big problem with that. It seems like um, – that's a that's an issue of people fitting within a box or, or a particular matrix. Here's what I tell people all the time, and uh, what I'll tell the coaches at Wisconsin and any, any other school: if you and I were going to buy a racehorse, all right, we would buy the racehorse based upon the lineage and the parentage, 100. If the lineage and the parentage were no good, we wouldn't buy. Now, based upon the lineage and the parentage, we got a running back that was five foot five. That was all Big Ten. Yeah. The, right. That that was a professional football player. There's another, there's another guy that came after him who's five foot eight, was the smallest guy in the hundred kilogram weight class at the Olympic Games. All right. Rufus will tell you, my son will tell you is everybody was taller than me. Everybody's six three, six four, six five. And now we have one of the tallest Fergusons in the family, which is Rufus Ferguson at, at five eleven and a half, six feet. And I can't believe that with some of these coaches, we're having a conversation sometimes about size. I have to do my best to hold my tongue until it until it bleeds because those things mean absolutely nothing. When you look at the best linebackers that have played the game, they've all they're all between the, the height of five eleven and six one, all of them. But there's this thing now where somebody has to be six two or six three. Or they got to listen. Either they can play or they can't play. Mm-hmm. Either you can play or you can't play. I understand wingspan. I understand field coverage. I understand all those things. But here here's here's the, here's the other thing. If either you can play or you can't play. Yeah, and, Mike Sing- and Mike Singletary is 5'11", my man. Yep. Well, and one, of the, one of the great Wisconsin linebackers of all time, Chris Borland, was 5'10", and had the shortest run draft. Oh, it's, it's, it's right. One of the greatest running backs ever played Wisconsin is 5'5". Five, five five yep. All right. it's, it's, can I can I ask really quickly, on um, just because we're talking 5'5", um, the, the road runner, People always said he's a small back. He was built like he his legs, to your point, look like Barry Sanders' legs. They, they're tree trunks. I mean, he was not a small back. People say small back. He was just a shorter back. He's like, short, like, 190 pounds. pounds. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, let's get the next one. That's that's a great segue. I appreciate that. Okay, that wing T. So... So with so with that play with that play I so in in the beginning they started I, I was on the same side when they had that when they had the pulling guard so that tight end that is crossing if you are if you're focused on that tight end crossing your eyes can be deceived by the play but you can actually see there's a guard pulling so I'm so I see that there's a guard pulling because they they ran that they ran that play multiple times and. First, my eyes did get deceived, and then I keen on. I can see that okay, that pulling guard is coming all the way through. So I was like, okay, I saw that pulling guard come through, and the running back was falling right behind. So if I go, if I if I want my angle towards the line of scrimmage, the running back will already be past me. So I just decided just go flat down the line and scrape. Yes, and I would boom hit him right there. Yes. There's a couple more clips here I want to get to. I, we're not going to go watch all the film, but I really enjoyed a lot of these clips. This is just closing speed here. Yes, the, I, the so the coaches, the coaches, they were they were asking like why why I wasn't like breaking down. I was like, coach, if I break down, he there's a he's going to find his mind to to do like a little move. But if if he's if he's receding, if he's like retreating backwards, and me chasing him, he's just going to keep going backwards and not having the ability to make a move because I'm still going to be closing. So that, that was, it was, he, he just tripped on his feet and I was able to go down and make that tackle. I mean, you put him out of the frame, bro. He's not even <laughs> in the camera anymore. Like that, that is, a, that is a, a great defensive play. I think this next yeah, one, thank you. maybe it's this oh, one. Oh yeah. Yes. I remember this was Steinbrenner for the second play of the game, second play of the game. The, the, so last year, Last year, the guards, both the both both of the guards would come up to me and like double team me because last year I was still the only linebacker in 
in the backfield. But this time I was able to see that they had that they had that little pull. So that tackle came. I made sure I swiped and and I, and I came in on the inside, came downhill, ooh, and we and we finished the play. Make sure I fall over top of the running back. Yes. Yeah, I, first of all, I, I love your breakdown, too, being able to re- recollect this stuff. It shows that a football IQ that's really impressive. But I absolutely love this play. So what we talked about a little earlier, the ability to get skinny, get through blocks, um, and just show quickness and agility. There's more than one way to defeat a block, right? And I think you show a lot of unique, um, innate athleticism in between the tackles. It's really impressive. And, like, most of, most of my stuff getting off the blocks has to do with, like, judo, like being able to track the hands and seeing when the hands are coming to me. I know – which type of moves to do to get to get to get off? Is that right there? That 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 tackle literally just missed me. Just forward. Oh yes, I remember this sack. I'm here. Great play. Yes, yes. I was I was able to see that the that the quarterback was he he, he was rolling out and like I'm like the I'm the man that shoots shoots down to the quarterback that chases him. So once I saw that, he just kept. Just doing his little shuffle, I decided to to break down and like get and just chase after him. The one the one thing that I really like about Rufus is at the point of contact, he never goes backwards. Mm-hmm. Like never, like he never goes backwards at the point of contact. Well, in every every clip I've seen, to your point, uh, Doctor Roddy, every clip I've seen, it's Rufus breaking down. Uh, I think you know, and just either standing somebody up or they go backwards. Right, right, one hundred percent. So, I. I don't know if I don't know if him being six three changes him doing that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if him being right. I, I I don't know. Here's what I do know. Um, at, at this particular time, we don't have an offer from University of Wisconsin, mm-hmm. so uh, we, we wait. I think they would like us to come back for the camp, uh, which personally I'm still rolling the dice on. To be honest with you, I I'm just rolling the dice on it. Um, because every time you come in town, man, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a thousand dollar price tag. Uh, not for sure. The, the film, the film is vicious. Rufus can play. His lineage is, is solid. Uh, but, but I guess, if, I guess, of course, Mike Trussell thinks he needs him to jump over some bags and slide back and forth in order to make a decision. Then we'll make a decision if we're going to do that. I did want to ask if, and in, no worries if you don't want to share, but, uh, I know you went to, uh, I believe you went up to Howard. Uh, or are there other places that you've, you've visited, other places that I know you've been at a rivals camp recently that you did really well at? Um, are there any other schools that you're kind of looking at or talking to? We've been to um, Gramlin State. We've been to Howard University. We've been to Jackson State. Um, he's been to FAU. He's been to North Dakota State. Uh, and he's been to Alabama State university um he's really uh interested in going to hbcu and like the only pwi that we're really entertaining is university of wisconsin and i i mean i i told um i think pat lambert i told coach lambert that i said hey man i mean we're, we're, we're interested it's the only pwi that we're interested in entertaining no it's really interesting i want i want to wrap up here and again just so thankful for both your times it's been an awesome conversation and i can't tell you how much i appreciate it um is there something, just what would you tell fans or coaches? What type of player are they getting? They get a player that is determined, works hard, and will hustle with an impeccable worth, worth work ethic. Yes. That's awesome. I think it's something every program needs. Uh, he is Dr. Uh, Roddy Ferguson. He is Rufus Ferguson II. Uh, obviously, the, the grandfather is Rufus the Roadrunner. One of the, I said it at the beginning, one of the baddest running backs that – I wish I could have seen him play. I, I really, really going back on the clips. He's he's a one off. You know, there's a lot of six backs. There's not a lot of people. There's nobody like him. And I wish I could have seen him play. But um, thank you both so much for all your time. We'll link everything that you guys are doing social on the social media. We'll put that in the show notes when it comes out. And uh, I can't tell you how much I'm 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 appreciate it. Thank you, yes, Ryan. Sir. Man, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Of course. Man.